Chapter 85. Stealth is not our greatest strength. Summary. The first part of their crime exam is underway. Time to save the princess! Sneaking through the metal halls, Ochako finally could see why Denki was so adamant about sound-dampening shoes. It was really hard to be completely silent, even the slightest sounds ricocheting down the empty halls. But they had to make do. They'd yet to run into someone, but it was only a matter of time. Apparently, on a ship as big as this, not only were patrols a regular thing when carrying something important, but anyone could just pop out of a room in front of them. They had to be ready to fight at any second. Good thing Aizawa-sensei made sure they didn't lack situational awareness by any means. The cuffs hooks to Otrako's belt clinked together as she turned the corner in a crouch. Sun Yu had stressed the need to be careful with them, because these were no ordinary handcuffs. These were a part of what made their mentors such successful pirates, specifically when it came to raiding ships. They were not particularly hard to make, but the materials were not cheap, some of them only found on death worlds. As soon as the cuffs were clicked closed around someone's wrist, they would immediately shrink to fit, while a strong electromagnet inside powered on, attracting to the nearest magnetic surface, on ships made of metal. Not much you can do to defend your ship when you're hanging from the ceiling like an angry pinata. Of course, being the stealth team, they didn't really want to leave a trail of pinatas in their wake, but it was better than letting them radio the whole ship about their presence. Plus, it cut down the numbers for when their cover was inevitably blown, and the next wave was sent in to clean up. Until that happened, though, they'd continue to look for the princess. The adults had taken the lead, waving them along when the coast was clear, which meant when they finally did run into someone, they were right where they needed to be to take them out. The two large dragon-like sentients didn't have time to blink their slitted yellow eyes before two darts were sticking between the gaps in their scales. They did, however, have time to blink before Kole slammed a small hammer against each of their heads. Not that it made a difference. The two dragons stayed upright long enough for metallic cuffs to clink around their wrists and tug them to the wall. Nice shot! Kole whispered into the comms. They won't be standing any time soon. Ochako saw as two pairs of slitted eyes began to unfocus, bodies already becoming lax where they lay against the wall. If that's what a headshot with Moyue's poison can do, remind her never to get on the woman's bad side. Moyue didn't reply, instead gesturing them forward down the hall. That didn't stop Kole from continuing to talk in hushed whispers. Ochako, Izuku, you two take point. This is your exam, after all. Let's see if the rumors stand up. It was a little odd not to hear her hero name in a situation like this, but given that none of the teens had thought to mention it until the day of the exam, they didn't have time for the others to memorize the foreign words. Taking in the order, Ochako nods along with Deku and slips to the front of their little group. Unlike all the other space missions they'd been on, they actually had time and information to plan ahead for this one. While they were great at dealing with problems that snuck up on them, they wouldn't have survived long enough to get abducted if they weren't. They also had training for raids like this. Aizawa-sensei stressed how, if it was a realistic option, they should always plan things out beforehand. So, that's exactly what they'd done. When she saw the lone dragon person exit a room, Ochako tensed, only for them to turn their back to the sneaking group without a glance and start walking away, whistling along to some unheard tune. Plan Y? Deku signed in JSL. Yet another thing she'd have to thank Dad Zawa for when they got to Earth. Yes, she replied, getting into position for the maneuver. Their mentors looked at them with obvious confusion as Ochako stood in front of Deku and let all five fingers on her right hand come into contact with him. Moliwe's sapphire eyes widened impossibly large as Kole grinned excitedly, as Deku began to float, cooperating with her as she maneuvered him swiftly into position. Sure, the two had seen Ochako float things like stylus when they were doing work and knew theoretically what her quirk could do, but it's not like quirk training was part of the crime school curriculum. 
The eight had only gotten a taste of their power, and she was eager to serve them up their whole five-course meal. A sharp grin, more befitting of Kotsky, spread across her lips, shining teeth drawn in a clear display of gleeful aggression. Without hesitation, Ochako spun herself and Deku around once, before releasing her grip on his legs and yeeting him towards the unsuspecting dragon person. Silver gleams as Deku unfurls his shield, right before crashing straight into the alien. Not even their thick scales can hold up to the power of the yeet, and the dragon goes limp like a puppet with its strings cut. The four of their body can crash loudly against the floor. Black tendrils delicately wrap around their unconscious form and lower them to the ground, all while Izuku hovers in place. Ochako gives an enthusiastic thumbs up as Deku touches down on near-silent feet. His eyes crinkle, shifting freckles out of place as he smiles. There are mentors, on the other hand. What was... I don't even... Why? Moyue fumbled. Kole had a slightly baffled look on her face, but nonetheless, she said. What she means to say is, good job, let's keep going. And so, with a quick playful tap on Moyue's helmet, they continued down the halls, after cuffing the unconscious dragon to the wall. She and Deku stuck to the front, hero core skills and hard-won instincts shining through. They'd taken down two more batches of villains before things went wrong. Ochako was poking at Izuku's ribs, trying to see if he was actually fine after the last alien bashed him against the wall. Black Whip had taken care of the Dragon Man swiftly, but it was still a hard hit that left him hunched over on the ground. It was then a gruff gasp sounds from behind her. She whips her head around in an instant, shielding the prone Izuku behind her as she came to see a large orange dragon alien looming at the end of the hall. Moliwe and Kole rush towards the sentient with a sudden burst of speed, but it was too late. Their hand was already pressed against what could only be a calm, a gruff voice mumbling a warning to the others. A jarring alarm echoed alongside the sound of the dragon's scaled body hitting the floor. Kole spoke into her own calm. Guys, we're gonna need that backup about now.